friends, greet you all in the name of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Today is Sunday the 2nd of August, it is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. And I'm going to do, some, do things a little bit differently today. Um, I, I don't um, send out a, a video of the homily every Sunday. It's usually every second Sunday, as you may know. Um, that might become even less frequent now that we have our WhatsApp service. Um, but I, nevertheless, I'll still try to, at least on occasion, send out a video recording of the homily. Uh, just so that you can see me and see that I'm still alive and doing well. Um, and, but, but having said that, um, I'm going to try and make it a little less formal. We're still in the church, obviously, so you can see St. Paul's lovely, lovely uh, organ. Um, but I'm going to leave out the, some of the material, such as the collect and the, the list of readings, and try to make it a less formal sort of reflection on um, on the, re the readings that we have for for the for the day. And really, what I'm going to be focusing on today is the Genesis reading and um, the reading from from Matthew, which is our gospel reading, obviously. So, on that note, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Okay, so, so both passages are, are quite instructive um, and helpful, and I do encourage you to go and read them if you have some time. It's Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31, and, and our Gospel reading is Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. Um, and what, what I'm going to suggest as a kind of a, as a kind of a, a hermeneutical, to use a fancy word, hermeneutical key or interpretive key, a way of looking at the gospel reading, I'm going to suggest that we also, um, perhaps before doing that or in doing that, we also consider our own theological orientation. Um, and, you know, oftentimes what happens in the encounters that Jesus has with his disciples and with the crowds, with the people, and, and you, you can't blame the people for, for thinking this way. You really, you really can't. Um, especially if you consider how um, dire and severe, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about. I don't mention this abstractly. I mean this in a very real, concrete way. And I've said this oftentimes before. For the for the majority of people living around Jesus two thousand years ago in the communities that he ministered to, they were dirt poor, living probably below what we would consider to be the poverty line, really scraping and eking out an existence, um, suffering um, to a great extent under the burdens of excessive levels of taxation, excessive levels of debt, excessive levels of poverty. And we know where there's poverty, there's all manner of evil. And so that's probably one of the reasons why demonic possession, which is, which is demonic, you, you, when, when, when considering, when talking about demonic possession, you can, never, you can never see it as demonic possession in and of itself, as if it was a phenomenon uh, that is, that is that for, for which the demonic realm or the spiritual realm is solely responsible. 
Demonic possession is always a symptom. It's always a manifestation of social ills. And so where you have um, societal breakdown, economic breakdown, political breakdown, then you will see, um, as I said, all manner of ills taking place. So, so, so you, you can't blame the, the folk that Jesus was ministering to, um, and it applies to some extent to his to the twelve disciples, for for crying out to God, and 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 we know that that there was a, there was great expectation at the time placed on the hope of a Messiah, the hope of a Redeemer. Uh, that, 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 that God would send His long-awaited Messiah to, to come and to rescue the people from Roman oppression, to rescue the people from debt. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, the, the, one of the first, basically, petitions made in the Lord's Prayer, it's not give us security, it's not give us health, it's give us just give us the daily bread that we need to get from one day to another, right? So, to, so they, were, they, were, they were waiting for the Messiah, expecting the Messiah to come along and to rescue them from all of these things. And as I said, you can't blame them for, for, for expecting this. Because really, who was, going, who was going to rescue them from their dire circumstances? Really, who was? Um, you, you, you can't you can't say realistically that they would they themselves would be able to to um, get out of the the dire situation and circumstances that they found themselves in the dire poverty um, the, the, the demonic possession excessive taxation excessive debt some of them some of them some of them being sold into slavery it's not something that they, they physically had the power to get out of. And so what, when, what do you do when you, when you become powerless? Well, you either lose hope entirely and fall into utter despair, or you, you begin to pray. You really begin to pray because they, you've reached a point now where no physical entity is of any avail, neither outside of your power or within your power and so you look to heaven you look to the divine for intervention and you start praying like you've never prayed before to God right and and all of these hopes were invested in the figure of the Messiah and so that's why time and again in the Gospels the people come to Jesus with their problems Lord my daughter is sick Lord my mother-in-law has a fever Lord I haven't walked for 12 years um, they, they, all of these problems are presented to Jesus right and again um, you can't can't blame the people for for bringing their problems to Jesus it's to, to quite a lot to quite a large extent natural but but Jesus in as much as Jesus wants to help them and does help them in as, much as, as, in as much as Jesus does um, bring them some form of salvation, he doesn't, he doesn't simply pluck them out of their circumstances. He doesn't simply wave a magic wand and say, Abracadabra, bada bing, bada boom, your problems are gone, does he? So, so if, you, if you go and look at the various healings and the various miracle stories, nine times out of ten, part of the solution which Jesus provides to his disciples, to the people, to whoever he's ministering to, part of the solution he, he provides is a level of agency and empowerment on the part of those he is ministering to. Because if you come to me with a problem, if you come to me and you are unemployed, if you come to me and you don't have food on your table, if you come to me and you've got, you've got a terminal illness, and I wave a magic wand, and I say, look how great Matthew is, look at, look at the power of God that is invested in Matthew, and I wave a magic wand and I say, bada bing, bada boom, your problems are gone, who are you going to look to? Are you going to look to God or are you going to look to me? 
You're certainly not going to look to yourself. Because the, the solution has not come from within yourself. The solution has come from me. I don't have a solution for you. The solution is always, somehow, by hook or by crook, has got to come from within you. And this is part of the mindset, of the, met the mentality that Jesus is able to bring about. This is, this is indeed part of the miracle itself. Which, which is why Jesus was such an effective miracle worker, which is why Jesus was such an effective healer, is because whenever he had an encounter with people, with someone, where he, he, he brought them a measure of healing, he brought them a measure of salvation, part of that salvation and healing was this agency, this empowerment that he was able to, to bring about, to encourage, to foster in the people that he was ministering to. And so the same is true, and we've looked at this text before, um, in our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 14, the feeding of, is it the 4,000 or the 5,000? Um, as so often happens, the disciples come to Jesus with a problem, right? The people come to Jesus with a problem. We've got a problem, Lord. We, we're going to pray because we've got a problem. And yes, to some extent that is natural. That's what we do. That's, that's largely why, why we pray, right? But Jesus takes the problem that they've dumped on his lap. He says, no, thank you. Just take your problem and go and sort it out. Take your problem and go and sort it out. And how does he do this? Well, the, the disciples come to Jesus and they say, Lord, there are thousands of people here who are literally starving. Where are we going to find enough money, enough food to feed all these people? Send them away. Send them away so that they can go into the village and buy something to eat. I don't know how they were going to buy something to eat because all of them were dirt poor. And what does Jesus say? You. You give them something to eat. Yes, that's right. You give them something to eat. Don't make the problem mine. You've got a problem, find a solution. How many fish do you have? How many fish do you have? And their immediate response is, well, and, and, and actually I did, I did look, look this up in the, in the Greek text. The very first words, I don't know if it was Peter, in any event, we've, we've mentioned this before, that the, the disciples, they're suffering from from a, def a, a, mentality, a mentality of deficiency, a deficiency mentali mentality, where it's, woe is me, we've got so little, we've got so little, how are we going to manage, how are we going to survive, what, don't tell me what you don't have, don't come and tell me what you don't have, I don't want to know what you don't have, come and tell me what you have, you can't work, my brother or sister, you can't work with what you do not have. That should be obvious and plain. You can only work with what you have. And by Jove, better believe it, you have something. Don't tell me that, you, that you've got nothing. That was the, the response of the disciples. Immediately, he says, how many loaves and fish do you have? We have nothing. Those are the very first words that come out of the disciples' mouths. mouths. Even in the Greek text, we have nothing. Except five loaves and two fish. Well, then you don't have nothing. Why, why are you starting off on negative footing? Why are you starting off by saying you don't have nothing? You don't not have anything. You have something. You have five loaves and two fish. So if you have five loaves and two fish, that is already something. Bring me what you have. We can use that and we can multiply that. Right? So again, it's about facilitating, engendering, fostering this change or shift in mindset and mentality that Jesus was such a genius at achieving in his um, disciples and in the people he ministered to. So I want to finally, I'm going to, I'm going to end with this. Um, I was going to speak at, at some length also about the Genesis passage, but perhaps I will do that in the audio recording. Um, for the WhatsApp service. I don't know how many of you have seen, it's one of my favorite animation, uh, modern, re more recent animation films, um, Kung Fu Panda. 
it's quite a, it's a, you know, a few years old already by now. Those of you who are still lucky enough to see your grandchildren um, regularly might, might have seen the movie. But basically, I, I want to try and distill the message of this movie for us. Because this is, this is again, the, the mindset that we, that we suffer from oftentimes when it comes to our relationship with God and when, when it comes to being people of faith, when it comes to being Christian. We, we expect Jesus to come down and wave the magic wand. And we, we, we pray for years and for years and for years, wondering why our prayers are not being answered, wondering why God is just standing by and not doing anything. And just ask yourself the question. You're wondering, you're sitting there right now, wondering why you've been praying for so long and why God is, is not doing anything, why for so long God has just been sitting on the sidelines not doing anything. I want to ask you a question, brothers and sisters. What are you doing? What have you been doing to change your situation? That is the question you need to be answering. Because God, God is not going to wave a magic wand. There's, there's going to be no angels breaking forth from the clouds of heaven, coming down in chariots of fire to rescue you. At least not at this point, I don't think. Right? The only way salvation is going to be manifested or engendered in you is by you kicking into action and doing something and God is then going to empower you to do what you have to do. And so this is basically the story that we have, the lesson that we have in Kung Fu Panda. So many of you, some of you might have seen the movie, um, there's this overweight adolescent panda named Po and his father is a, is a, is a tiny little noodle making duck who owns a, a restaurant, a noodle restaurant and his one hope in life is that Poe is going to grow up uh, and one day take over the noodle making business and take over the restaurant and follow in his father's footsteps. But Poe's secret ambition and secret love and secret passion is Kung Fu. And he would just love more than anything else in the world to master the art of Kung Fu. And this ambition and this dream seems entirely hopeless because he's an overweight uh, hapless, awkward panda who, does, who hardly has any coordination. Until, until one day, he, he, he happens to be able to attend a, a ceremony at the Jade Palace, which is basically the home of Kung Fu in ancient China, in this, in this fictional setting. And through a ridiculous set of accidents, uh, he finds himself prophesied over, that is Po, this, the panda, the main character, he's prophesied over as being the next dragon warrior by, the, by this tiny little turtle master Uwe. And of course, although it seems like an accident that he's prof prophesied over, once the prophecy is issued, it cannot be taken back. And so, uh, Master Shifu, who is, who is Master Uwe's um, um, mentee or student, but who's also the mentor of the Furious, Furious Five, the most sort of feared and famed uh, Kung, Kung Fu practitioners in, in ancient China. They're furious because many of, you know, they thought that they, it was going to be one of them to, to be prophesied as the next dragon warrior. And part of the central sort of task, uh, according to, to the legend of the dragon warrior, um, is to defeat, is to battle the, the villain of the film, who is this vicious, uh, very well-built, um, very adept at Kung Fu snow leopard called Tai Lung. And Tai Lung has been in prison for who knows how many years. And Tai Lung, uh, then, after, after the prophecy is made over Po, over the panda, that he's going to be the next dragon warrior, Tai Lung is, manages to escape from prison and and the legend is that Thailand is one day going to return to the village to try and seize control of the Jade Palace and, and assume the title of Dragon Warrior for himself, right? And there's one item in the film um, which is essential to, to becoming the Dragon Warrior, which is essential to Po achieving his destiny, to, 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 to having this prophecy fulfilled and realized, and that is the Dragon Scroll. There's this the dragon scroll is shrouded in mystery and, and only the dragon warrior, the true dragon warrior, has the right to, to possess the scroll and to read the scroll. And inside the scroll, there is the secret to the essence of what it means to be the dragon warrior, right? 
And so Po undergoes rigorous training with Master Shifu. Master Shifu is played is played by the voice of Dustin Hoffman. He's quite a quite a comical, funny character in himself. Uh, it's a lovely film. And and needless to say, despite their many hours of training, it seems that ultimately they're going to be unsuccessful in converting Po, this great big overweight panda, into the prophesied dragon warrior. And furthermore, it seems that Poe is going to be unsuccessful in defending the Jade Palace and in defending the village from the wrath of the, this, this um, great villain, Tai Lam. And so Poe returns. Um, in despair and in dejection and desperation, he returns to his noodle-making father, the duck. Uh, <laughs> and, and um, you know, he's kind of given up. He's at the point of desperation. He realizes that he's never going to become the dragon warrior. Um, and his father is, is quite relieved at this because now his father's dream, his father's ambition is going to be realized and he thinks that Poe is now going to be able to take over the noodle making restaurant. And so the, the father feels that this is the ideal time to reveal to Poe the secret that he has held for so many years, which is the secret ingredient to his secret ingredient noodle soup. Yeah, it's called the secret ingredient noodle soup. And for years, Poe has been trying to perfect this, this recipe. He's been trying to replicate this recipe. But his father has never told him what the secret ingredient is. And in Poe's mind, his noodle soup is never as tasty, is never as good as the noodle soup that his father makes. Because he doesn't know what the secret ingredient is. Right? And now because the father thinks that Poe is going to, to succeed him in the noodle making business, he's, he's ready to bequeath this long held secret to his son. And so as Poe leans in to hear the secret, the father whispers into Poe's ear, There is no secret. There is no secret ingredient. At this point, Poe has an epiphany, a light bulb goes on in the mind of Poe and he rushes back and he opens the dragon scroll. The dragon scroll was always blank. It was always empty. There's nothing written on the dragon scroll but being, uh, being made out of gold leafed paper, it has a shiny surface. So when you unroll it, whoever unrolls it invariably sees their reflection looking back at them. So the only thing the dragon scroll reveals to the holder is a picture of themselves. And Poe realizes there is no secret ingredient because everything that he has, which is necessary, which is required to become the dragon warrior, is already inside of him. There is no secret ingredient. You already have what you need to have to become the dragon warrior. Maybe blessed friends.